I'd like to thank Elizabeth, Sophia, and the rest of the team over at the Miller Business Center and the Middle Country Public Library for giving us this opportunity. We have a very extensive and great relationship with everybody over at the MCPL. Um, I am personally, um, I, I am on the board of trustees for the Middle Country Public Library. So um, I have a very long and rich history with the library. I live in Middle Country School District. I'm raising my children there. I graduated from Sun Ridge High School. Um, and I used to work at the library. I'm also on the board for the um, Middle Country Chamber. So I like to stay very involved in my local community and there's no greater place than the Middle Country Public Library to get involved. So that being said, um, my day job is working over at People's Alliance Federal Credit Union. I am the senior manager of business development and um, we offer a variety of savings accounts, checking accounts, amazing loans. And we also offer a bank at work program, which we have turned virtual, obviously, you know, since the pandemic hit. And we bring the credit union to your place of work and offer it as a free employee benefits program. So if it's something you're interested in learning about, please see myself and I also have Angela Barone here. You could contact one of us. I'm going to put my contact information in there. But now I'd like to turn things over to the regular presentation. I'm going to be introducing Brian Ladani. He's the Senior Account Executive and Google Ad Strategist at PS Digital Marketing Agency located in Hop Hog. And he's a member of the credit union, I might add. Um, Brian has over 18 years in su successfully marketing small to business sized businesses here on Long Island. He utilizes his vast and deep experience to help businesses navigate through his complex space by customizing each solution for each client. His attention to detail, passion to help, and experience are just a few examples of his strengths. Specializing in Google My Business listings, Google ads, website design, text messaging, marketing, and much more. Brian is also a very competitive cyclist and is the co-founder of a new and upcoming not-for-profit called the Long Island Cranks Foundation, where they put on one to two epic rides a year and fundraise and bring awareness to local organizations. So without further ado, Brian, take it away. Great. Thank you, Lisa. And let me, I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, thank you, Miller Business Center. Number two, share. Okay, everyone could see? Okay, all right, awesome. Hey, Angela, how you doing? Good to see you. Cool. Um, so basically, this, I'm going to kind of jump right into it. Um, the power of your logo, the importance of your logo. We typically do these workshops pre- um, COVID, we used to do them in person over at different chambers, um, associations, et cetera. Now, I think um, Lisa just mentioned, or even Elizabeth, the power of the Zoom meetings. We kind of like it this way as well. People could interact with us that may not be able to attend in person. You have the desktop in front of you, so you're, able, you're actually able to see your screen up close instead of a... Um, like a, what is it called? One of those screens that are maybe 20 feet away from you. So we embrace it just like um, everyone else is nowadays. The power of your logo. Um, Brian, Danielle's on the phone call as well. We're located in Hop Hog. I think um, uh, Lisa just mentioned a little bit about myself. What we expect uh, this morning, it is, uh, we like participation. If there is, that would be awesome interaction. Please feel free to share your business name or logo. I'm sure a majority of people on this phone call have a logo, whether they like it or not, it's a different story. And questions are always welcomed throughout. I'm not sure, I think if you wanna ask any questions in the message box, that's fine. If you wanna unmute yourself, totally cool. So either way, it's all good. Today's agenda. The importance of your logo, we're going to talk about how and where to brand your logo online, how to format your logo accordingly. Does your logo need a tagline? And um, we're just going to, right here it is. Here goes a few logos. I'd love to take a look at your logo. So if, after you want to send me your logo, just for us to critique it, that's fine. If you love it, that's awesome. 
but here's a few examples of some awesome logos. You may be familiar with some of these companies, the Bronx Chambers over there. There's a high kick Taekwondo there in Sayville. Clovis is a tree company up in Setauket. KSK, I mean, I could go on and on, but either way, um, why your logo is important. There's seven reasons why. I'm just going to list them all and then we'll just jump into each one. There's a total of seven of them. Okay. Basically, it's going to grab people. It's going to grab people's attention. You want something to stand out, something that is recognizable, whether it's on a social media platform, whether it's on your website, your business card. Um, so definitely make it something, and we'll go over, I'm gonna go back and show you a few other logos that definitely catch people's attention where it's very memorable. This way, when people are searching for your product or service, at least that brand recognition is there. I've seen that someplace they're more prone to engage with you because of the recognizing um, your logo. It's a powerful first impression. So make sure it's simple, but yet powerful. The foundation, it's your brand identity. So have it something related to your business. Um, I'll show you the one we just created for Long Island Cranks Foundation, which is the non-for-profit it's up here on the right hand side, Long Island Cranks Foundation. It has to do with obviously cycling. So we incorporated that. All right, let's get back to this the brand identity. It separates you from your competition, whether it's the colors, whether it's the design, the look and feel. So, you know, once again, it does have the brand identity to, um, to grab people's attention so they're familiar with you when performing searches for you online. Brand loyalty, it becomes memorable. Hopefully it's memorable. If it's not, if you're, if you're just established a business and you're early on and you may want to reformat your logo now, might as well take care of that before you develop, before you invest one, two, three, four, five years into your current branding. But if you're already developed into that, you can, I'll show you different ways you can modify your logo without completely reach, changing it to, to throw people off. Number seven, it's expected. It's like a business card. It's like a website nowadays. Um, the logo is actually the first. We do, a, we do a foundation workshop. I think a few of you have been on um, these workshops we've done via Zoom. And the number one, the first thing we talk about is the logo. The second thing we talk about is the Google My Business page. Third is the website. Fourth is Google Ads, driving traffic to your website. And the fifth most, uh, the fifth part of that foundation is reviews. But the logo is the first step to a solid foundation. So, so where to market your logo? Um, you have a bunch of different, obviously, the, you know, the business cards, um, your website, social media platforms, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Instagram. Um, if you want to get into the promotional materials, there goes your website, there goes your business cards, email signatures. That's a no brainer right there. You could actually even incorporate a review button there as well. If you want looking to generate reviews. Um, I think Bob and I were just talking about generating reviews on your Google, my business page. Social media platforms, I mentioned vehicle wraps. I think you saw one uh, KSK garage doors. A lot of the contractors, they're able to wrap their vehicles this way when they're on the job site, they're working in a particular area, they're able to generate business just through the vehicle wrap itself. They're, they're a little pricey, but worth every penny because of the branding. Uh, apparel. Um, you can see high kick Taekwondo down in Seville. They have their hats. They have it on their, the belts, the different clothing. What else we got here? Promotional materials. You could go with the mouse pads nowadays, the pens, the coffee mugs. I mean, it's really, it's limitless on where you could put your logo. Um, 
You just want to make sure it's something that's powerful, something that catches people's attention. And print advertisement, flyers, um, anything print related, whether you're doing direct mail, whether you're doing Newsday or Penny Saver or pretty much um, any type of uh, leave behinds on flyers. Okay, how to brand your logo. One thing you want to do is make it consistent across. Nowadays, what, what, what the pandemic did, it accelerated people's um, connectivity via the internet. Where people were back in early of 2020, they were connected. A large portion of people were connected online. Beginning of 2021 this year, there's so many more people connected because they had to get connected, whether it was work-related, um, survival related. So that growth, that internet growth that took place was just turbocharged. And now everyone is familiar with going online, doing these Zoom meetings, um, buying uh, groceries online, buying product online, looking for different services you may need because we weren't, you know, we were kind of locked in, if you will. So now it's more important than ever to make sure you have that powerful logo, but to brand it across all of your different networks. For example, Andy Sabota, he's a private golf instructor. His logo is here. It's on his, what is this, his website. This has got to be his Facebook page, his LinkedIn page, and also his Google My Business page. So those are a few different platforms, Instagram as well. And nowadays, if you're creating a logo, you may want to think about the design of the logo because if you're going to be social media centric, you know, you want to have that logo more of a roundish, squarish, not those horizontal type logos. But there's ways we could fix that for you or ways you could fix it to get onto these like the Facebook profile picture, the Instagram picture, even look at LinkedIn at the bottom left to fit within those parameters, not only to fit within the sizing requirements, but also people could see it. There's, there's some logos that were developed, you know, at no fault of anyone's, just business has been around forever and it just doesn't fit properly into the Facebook. Some things have to be alterated, but um, some, some logos are just hard to position there where you can't really make it out. You could see the colors, but you can't read the name how to brand your logo once again here goes Lamia's Pizzeria there in Bayport you'll see on the right hand side that's his website his mobile version of his website there goes his Facebook he just had the perfect logo to fit in all these different areas I'm not saying it should be the only thing you think of when building or redesigning a logo but it's something to highly consider especially if you're gonna to wanna to use Facebook and Instagram to grow your awareness, grow your business. Um, what we did with Long Island Cranks, if you noticed it, it was circular. So we took that into consideration because our growth is gonna be primarily on the social platforms and different Facebook group pages and so on. And then it's just easy to put on our website and kind of go from there. So this is Lamia's. Hi, Kick Taekwondo. This is interesting. We're going to talk about this because they primarily had a um, horizontal logo. If you see on their website on the top left here, what they did was years ago, a few years ago, they actually took the same colors, the look, the feel, and they restructured it to fit within the Facebook profile picture here on the bottom left, that roundish. So what they did was they took the horizontal logo and they were able to adapt it to fit the profile picture. The, what is this here? This is your Instagram. And then they just took it a step further and it just slapped right nicely on the, the baseball cap here. And this is their Google My Business page on the bottom right. So that's what you can do if you don't have a logo that's kind of, boxish or maybe a circle, whatever you want to call it, symmetric. These are some other examples 
Uh, well, here's high kick Taekwondo on the right, how they convert it. DB container service, that's pretty straightforward. We call it stacking. If you're able just to stack that DB, that container service, that will fit much better in the profile pictures of their Facebook page, Instagram, LinkedIn. Atlantic Stamp Company is primarily a horizontal, same concept, it's stacking it. If you need help with that, if you're not digitally savvy, if you need any assistance on how to take your current logo and kind of reformat it to fit these parameters within the social media platforms, feel free. You know, anyone on the call today will complimentary, will do it for you, not a problem. Moving right along, um, if, is there any questions so far? Everyone, everyone, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, <clears throat> taglines, taglines, they're memorable descriptions that basically get your message across. Is it important that you have one? You, sh you, you kind of should, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. So that's something you'd want to consider. What we, and I'm, I know I'm talking a lot about Long Island Cranks Foundation, which is something that developed maybe two months ago. So it's relatively new. Our tagline, where do I show you? Do I have it anywhere? It's gonna come up, but our tagline, so you know, is epic rides for a cause. It's basically, it's gonna be a three to seven word phrase that definitely complements your logo and gets that message across. It's a short description. As a catchphrase, build a brand personality and helps in setting the position of the brand. So the epic rides for a cause, that's truly what we do. Um, the next slide will talk about how to develop a tagline for your logo, yes. But a couple of things you wanna consider are, obviously, what do you do? And the epic rides for a cause, we do epic rides and we do it to, for, um, to help bring awareness to certain charities on Long Island. So epic rides for a cause just kind of made sense for us. Um, here's, here's some um, taglines for YouTube, Coca-Cola, Walmart, KFC, Finger Licking Good, um, BMW, we know, The Ultimate Driving Machine, Volkswagen, Got Milk, there goes your California milk processor, came up with that one years ago, uh, GE, Imagination at Work. So here's some examples of logos with taglines. All right, moving right along. So I'm sure you're thinking what's the difference between a tagline and a slogan. Basically, um, taglines don't, uh, taglines don't, you know, I was just read that wrong. Taglines don't usually change. They're pretty consistent. I think we use Disneyland as an example. They had different slogans based on their marketing campaigns. So your tagline is gonna be something more permanent and then, like I said before, how to write a tagline. If you need help, um, feel free. You want to bounce these ideas off your colleagues. You can even bounce them off of us. But the number, couple of things we thought of as we were preparing this, you want to just write down basically what benefit your customers get when they use your product or service. You want to definitely slim it down to three or five words because you want it to either encompass your logo, become part of your logo, kind of you want it to flow with. So it's not, obviously it's the shorter, the better if you can. It's just easier to format, easier to peep for easier for people to read when you start putting it on business cards, the Facebook, the Instagrams, your website, even your mobile website as well. That's where that would come in. And choose something that you know, and just choose one of the uh, one of the one of your thoughts that you've written down. But definitely, you want to write these. We came up with Epic um, Rise for a Cause. We wrote down about maybe seven or eight different, not sentences, but just different, um, I guess, taglines, if you will. And that one just stood out. And we had some help with that as well. We didn't create that on our own. We definitely bounced that idea off a few of our colleagues, and they came up with that tagline, which, which once you develop that logo and tagline, you're going to want to promote it. 
So here's a few examples of logos with taglines. Once again, they're not, you're not every, not every logo has a tagline. You can, if it will enhance your overall branding, your overall identity, yes. Uh, Walker McKenzie, Integrity, Efficiency and Results. You got Tanya Hefferts. She's a speech therapy helping children communicate their way to success. That logo gets a little, when you put it on Facebook business page, it, you can't really read that. That may need to be reformatted slightly. Peconic Wellness on the bottom right, we showed two examples, one of more of a horizontal. And then what we did was to convert it to fit on the Facebook profile pictures, the Instagram, and just make it more user-friendly online on different social media platforms. And I speak of Facebook and Instagram and your website and Google My Business. Those are the, the majority of places where you want to pay attention to. Google, more importantly, it's not necessarily social, but Google, that's where 88.6% of all searches are being performed for your product or service, or whether they're vetting you or not, that's where they're going. So that's why Google is paramount. Facebook and Instagram, I think the percentage is 57% over the last 12 months in the United States, that's where people go to get their social media fix. So if that's where the majority of people are winding up searching, surfing, <clears throat> you want to make sure you're number one, you're there. And number two, you look, you're, you're consistent and your message and your branding and your logo is visible on those platforms. So that's why we just mentioned uh, mainly Google. I mean, yeah, there's Bing, there's Yahoo, there's, <clears throat> there's other like DuckDuckGo, there's other search engines out there. Yes, there's other social media platforms out there, but as business owners, you have limited amount of time and bandwidth. So if you're gonna exert that energy, that time, that effort, that budget, on specific platforms, Google is number one on the intent-based marketing and Facebook, Instagram is number one on the social media marketing. And then your website kind of ties everything in between. It's the nucleus. It's, it's where everything, whatever you're doing, that's where people, you want people to wind up on your website. So you could tell them a little bit more about what you do, how you do it, and how they could get in contact with you whether it's a form fill, whether it's a phone call, whether they want to make a purchase, maybe you're selling something online. Um, there goes Epic Rides for a Cause. There's you know, Long Island Cranks, Epic Rides for a Cause. There's Staycation Products, your outdoor oasis. <clears throat> and just kind of a little side note, the home services industry, and even Jerry, I'm sure you've seen an influx of business. More people are connected to not that they are, but they have to be connected because that's the way they have to interact with either their business or their family. So I'm sure businesses on, on the, um, the whole computer, the internet, um, the computer repair side has been um, you know, impacted significantly just as well as the home service industry. Yes. Um, there's, no, there's no place like home. Everyone's, all of our contractors are just having, you know, there's winners and losers and um, you know, I'm just kind of talking about staycation products. They're doing, um, you know, the fact that people are sprucing up their exterior of their homes and interiors, uh, just because of what we went through over the past year, they're reap reaping the rewards and, and that's that. <clears throat> um, are there any, once again, any questions, comments, if anyone wants to share their logo, if anyone loves their logo, if. I'm not sure if Jerry had a comment based on well, yours. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I want to thank uh, Brian. He, uh, on, I believe it was in November. He uh, looked at my logo and, and he did what uh, you see right there right now. Oh yeah, we um, we reformatted that for you, Jerry, right? Yes, we reformatted that. You also did the other version where the mo the movie version, you know, five second movie one. All right, awesome. I awesome. want to say thank you again. Very welcome, Jerry. Very welcome. Um, and if anyone else has a logo they may want to manipulate to fit on these different platforms, um, feel free. 
It'd be our pleasure. How can I, how can I share? I want to share my logo, but I don't know how. Uh, what do you got, um, Roberta? What, don't tell me. Destination <laughs> accessible. Right. So I'll, pu I'll pull it up on the screen. Destiny, hang on a second. And while you're pulling it up, we do have a question from uh, Deborah who's asking if authors need a logo. I think for brand identity, yes. And whether it's just your name, but some sort of spin on, when I say spin, some sort of uh, font change. And maybe whatever type of books or whatever type of publications you're writing, maybe a little tagline underneath. I, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but look, Jane Doe. Um, and then maybe underneath it, those three to five, three to five words of a tagline, but with a nice, beautiful font that fits your personality mm -hmm. and the type, of, the type of genre that you write about. Well, it's interesting that you, it, ooh. Okay, we'll go to Roberta and we'll get back to you, Deborah. <laughs> Oh, hey, Deborah. That's all right. I got your name now. Sorry about the Jane Doe. Hey, Deborah. <laughs> so, for so, Roberta, here's uh, Roberta's destination accessible. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, I, I, I know before you go. I mean, that's a perfect tagline. It sure is. That's good. It's, nice. it's just, it's there. And it's, you know, as far as one thing I did know just pulling this up was. See here, this is where the, um, I mean, it's so small, but you kind of got to work in. Roberta, we'll, we'll kind of resize that for you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm to do it. No Brian, problem. I got a question, Brian. Yes. How do you feel about a logo on your product? Like we were discussing my product earlier where it goes on your ceiling. How would you feel about the logo um, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, just, just very tastefully done where when you look up at it, you can see it, uh, to let other people know in case you don't remember the name, will, will that help? Or, or should I not boldly put the, the logo on the product? You'd be Bob, you'd be, I'm not going to say you'd be crazy not to, but I highly recommend you do. Yes. Because if we, we have it on the product. It is white. It, the, the cover is white you would have to take it down and pull it close to see it. Should it be perhaps a different color or is that going to be an eyesore? Yeah, it really, you know, like you said, you want something tact, you know, you want something tasteful. tasteful. That people, yes. Yeah. That isn't, you, you, Bob, you got, you know, you know, your business, you're going in people's homes, you're putting these covers on their AC vents. I know my wife, she has a certain color scheme and things. So mm -hmm. to really, mess with the color i think that's a disservice to your okay. product but okay. as long as you keep it within the color scheme of the product because when picking out that item for your home you know you want it you don't want that how do you say that um i'm not saying it's an eyesore but you know what i'm saying right. that um in that inconsistency of color up there right well the product is white it's made out of abs plastic and we have the name etched in it so yeah. you really can't see it until you actually have it in your hands it's tough, Bob. Okay. I know. Okay. I hear you. You know, it's just it's in the hallways, it's in the bedrooms, it's in the, the living rooms. You okay. gotta, you know, we could talk about that offline, maybe on how to. I think what you're asking is how do you make it pop a little bit more so than instead of someone having to get a ladder to go up and look at it. I understand what you're saying. Well, we could take a look at it offline. Okay. Ryan. Um, I just want to, I'm, I'm in the process of understanding the whole branding issue in terms of using the same font, using various colors, um, so that that would identify me as an author, identify my books, and when people are looking for my books, they, they'll know that I use purple and pink or something of that, that nature, so that I get a distinct um, identification from um, developing my brand. I just didn't know whether or not it would be um, opportune to have a, a logo, but I see what you're saying in terms of a tagline. Um, basically, um, a, not, not anything as specific as some of the logos that I've seen, but a tagline with my name and that could help to, and, and those identifying things within the brand that would help to um, develop my identity. Deborah, can I ask you a question, maybe more of a publishing book question? 
Sure. Are you uh, writing nonfiction or fiction? Nonfiction. Then yeah, I think like branding yourself as whatever you are an expert in, um, I think it's much more important than for a fiction writer because who you are is much more important if you're writing nonfiction as opposed to fiction. Honestly, I don't care who's writing my fiction. I want a good story. But if I'm reading a, fic a nonfiction book, who that person is, is much more important because I, I need to know where that information is coming from, whether it be factual information or self-help information or motivational. So um, I wanted to share my screen because one of our attendees, um, Andrea, would like to share her logo to get your feedback, okay? Sure, no problem. And just real quick, Elizabeth, Deborah, your, you know, your signature, your signature, your name will become your logo. You know, so think of it, over, your name is your logo. It's just whatever style, font, whether it's stacked, whether it's horizontal, you know, so take okay. that into consideration. All right, okay. Oh, this is cute. Okay, can you see this? Yes. I apologize, I'm using a Mac, which I'm not very good at. <laughs> so am I. It's the only computer they have. Oh boy, it's filling the wow, it's screen. I'm never gonna be able to get out of this. Oh. Okay. Hi, Brian. This is Andrea. How are you? Good morning, Andrea. How are you? Good. So this is my logo now, which obviously, or I guess I should ask you, what do you think of it as far as it's kids friendly, obviously the colors, the animation and the font? Sure. No, it, it's definitely, um, it's, it, it pops healthy friends nutrition. Um, Andrea, is that, that's the name of the company, Healthy Friends Nutrition? It is. Okay, fine. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. You guys uh, thank you. So my question is, I'm all, I'm launching a corporate brand. So this does not work. I did, I just sent Elizabeth my new one, but, um, I'm hesitant because it's so different okay. than this one. Remember this, I'm gonna stop share and go download the other one, okay? Thank you. And Andrea, how long have you been around for? How long has the business been around? Uh, two and a half years. Okay. I will keep you posted. So, um, yeah, so um, for corporate, of course I had to change a lot. Um, a lot of people use their name because I'm a clinical nutritionist and a personal health chef. Um, so it is toned down, but it doesn't really indicate anything about nutrition. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Hold on. I should have took a snapshot of the other one. I sent it to you directly in the chat. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's, it's a complete different. Okay, can you see it now? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, two and a half years, Andrea have been around the company's been around for I think um, I think incorporating I'm not looking at a side by side comparison right I'm going by memory here, but it is a completely different if we could take your healthy friends nutrition the first one the first one and just kind of use those colors and that maybe even um gonna try to do both hold on no oh, really <laughs> even the font mm -hmm. but um at will elizabeth is working over there so did i do it yes good. what yeah i mean for the Smith, there you go <laughs> <laughs> i mean the the I see what you do. You, you, yeah, the, the name, I understand the corporates on the left and the fact that it's. Um, I know because people uh, use, usually use their name in a lot of times in corporate and I just it didn't feel like my name, but in, I try to abbreviate healthy friends, but maybe that should actually be healthy friends. Yeah, I think there's no downside. Always, I always like to weigh out the pros and cons. I think, and we could ask the, the, the other, the, uh, the members here. I think healthy friends nutrition, 
I think you kind of have to. Out. I mean, yeah, I think you should better. because then if you can't, if I met you and your name wasn't like Harold or, you know, Harriet, yeah. something with an F, I would be confused. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, only, the only thing with the first, the one on the right, the mm -hmm. F seems to be bleeding into the background a little bit. See the, I have it on another background as well. I'm just saying, throwing it to the other, other color, and the you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Jer Jerry's saying the red on the green, right? Oh, yes, correct. Uh -huh. the, the F, the letter F on the bottom right. You see it there? It's, mm -hmm. it's sort of disappearing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that that's what I'm, I see. I don't know if it's as you see it or not. it's just it's me or but. I just, yeah. The only thing I see about the beautiful, the beautiful logo. Yeah, well, Amanda, what? Amanda, as a as a consumer, I'm looking at him saying, "Healthy friends." I love the the avocados jumping rope. The the eggplant is lifting the weights. I I love it. It's just I don't know if it's too big or something because it looks busy, but I like what you have in there. Yeah, and thank it's you. So I think and on my on the Google my business it actually fits. It's in a circular. It fits. It actually fits. fits. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I think it's so catchy and it's so yeah. memorable. As as a consumer, I would remember yeah. that in a minute as opposed yeah. to the other one. Yeah, because the other one I thought it was like like you said, Elizabeth, is HF the name? I it, it does not yeah. about the business. Yeah, is HF yeah, so, the yeah, only so. name? Yeah. I was trying to do HFC yeah, and I as think an abbreviation. Healthy, healthy friends, I when I meet you, then I expect a really warm, welcoming person. Mm -hmm. Whereas HF and that little Z, I think is almost more scientific. I don't know why I think a man is going to show up. I don't know why. <laughs> wow. That's too funny because my I'm daughter said- I'm giving my first reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my daughter said yesterday, it looks like the periodic table. Yeah, because yeah. that little Z, <laughs> the little Z. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I guess, um, so the, the second, the corporate one needs to be a tone down of the first one. Cause I'm gonna need two separate logos. But yeah, I think you since could, I just, I launched the corporate in February, but not really launched it. Just soft launched it. I mean, you could even take the same font to Healthy Friends Nutrition and kind of encompass that into a, a oval, if you will, and mm -hmm. kind of maybe throw a couple of behind that faded, um, maybe the apple or the mm -hmm. avocado or some sort of fruit, like maybe in the background or on the side or. Okay, I'll call you la later, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop you. sharing. Thanks, Elizabeth. You're welcome. Thanks, sir. I learned something new today, so thank you. That's how you have to do with an Apple. I used to do Microsoft the entire time when I was working, and then I transitioned. Just got to fool with it. I don't use it all the time, so. <laughs> I was going to, the one, I know it's 9.57 and everyone's time is valuable this morning. Um, I wanted to take a minute to, this is doing what we've been doing for so long. We find that businesses rarely take a look at themselves. They look at their logo, they look at their website, but take a look at what you look like online. So my, I'll leave you on this note, go to Google in the search browser, put your company name, see what you look like. What, what does your first impression look like? You're going to see your map listing on the right. You're going to see organic listings on the left. So that's, that's one takeaway you can do um, in addition to maybe looking at the logo as well. So look for yourself, put your company name, your location, and do you like what you see? If you do, improve upon it. If you don't, find the weaknesses. And primarily, it's probably going to be reviews. Maybe your Google My Business page isn't formatted correctly in the sense the fields aren't filled out, the address, the telephone number, the hours of operation, your services, maybe your COVID-19 update is not completed. And then take a look at what you look like on your mobile phone. The mobile phone is where majority of traffic, majority of um, interact, a majority of searches are being performed is all on the mobile device. Um, when I say a majority, 65 to 75%, depending on the business, that's where people are finding you. 
So look at yourself online on the mobile device. Do you, is your website formatted correctly? Um, because that's going to be a big deal. And what's the last thing? Oh, we were going to mention two things about reviews. Uh, Miller Business Center, Alex and Elizabeth, they're just great for putting these workshops on, these, these networking events, um, yeah. helping the local businesses. If we could do a Google search for Miller Business Center, they have a Google My Business page. I mean, I wrote a review, I think, a week ago. But they just, they don't, they're kind of lacking, the, you know, they haven't really focused on it because their primary focus is helping us. So I was going to make a, a suggestion okay. that we should all write a review for Miller Business Center if you have the time. Okay. I know Roberta and I exchanged a few reviews back and forth and um, that's pretty much, I know it's 9.59 right now. If anyone feels like writing us a review on PS Digital, we welcome that as well. And I think that's that's all I have, Elizabeth and Alex. Excellent. Does anybody have Thank any you. questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great, great. Thank you Thank so you. much, to Brian. Um, I took a lot of notes and learned a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that. Uh, my colleague Sal and I had kind of bounced around ideas on how we could refresh, we call it refreshing, maybe our Miller Center logo, not our library logo. We love, we love him. Um, so this was really, really wonderful. And thank you everybody for, you know, your input. Uh, Roberta, I see your hand. And I just want to say thank you to Brian and tell the other people who may not know, Brian was wonderful, was very willing to chat, and I would recommend him highly. Okay, yeah. Roberta. Thank you very much. Great yeah. job. Thank you. Thank you I so echo, much. I echo those sentiments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you. And enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. And thank, thank you too. again to Lisa and Angela from PAFQ for supporting this program. Thank we you. We couldn't you. do thank it without you. them. Thank you. Elizabeth, Have a great please one. don't feel that the emails are too much. I love when I, I open up and I see <laughs> Miller Business Center because I know something's going to be and Thank I'm you. Place that on Thanks for Google. opening them. <laughs> I will do. I'm going to place that on your Google, Google business page. Thanks. For Brian. Thank you, Brian. Have a nice one. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was good.